so high. So it's can again, can again. So today we're going to do some more Tai Chi. We're going to do uh, the constant bear exercise. This is uh, from the five animal frolics of uh, Chen Manqing. Chen Manqing uh, style Tai Chi is probably one of the world's most practiced styles of uh, Tai Chi, often called the, the short yang uh, style or yang, short yang form. So this is said to have been Chen Manqing's favorite uh, exercise, the constant bear. So there's quite a few different styles of Tai Chi. You, you have your, your, your low frame Tai Chi, uh, like Chen style. Uh, you have your, 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 your small frame, uh, like a sun style Tai Chi, and then you have a, a mid range style, like uh, Chen Manqing style Tai Chi. So we're gonna do this in, in, in a mid uh, range style. If you want to go lower, you can. If you don't want to go as low as I'm gonna go down here, then don't go as low. Remember, with Tai Chi, Tai Chi is all about working towards your capabilities. You can't do anybody else's Tai Chi, so work to your capabilities. Try to uh, stretch yourself a little bit but kind of don't go to the extreme where you can't uh, do anything for a few days because you you're, you ache so much from overexertion. Okay, so the constant bear exercise. So we're gonna go out to a, a slightly wider uh, than shoulder width stance. Uh, this is kind of like a horse stance, a marbu stance. As I said, you can go lower than this. I'm not gonna go any lower than this. Feet parallel to each other if you can. Like you're standing on a, a train tracks here. But if this is at all painful on your knees, you can turn the toes out to the side ever so slightly. But we are aiming towards being able to stand in this uh, parallel stance without it being painful on the knees. Okay, pelvic area is tilted forwards, but it feels like it's hanging down from our suspension from above. Imagine you have that long ponytail on the top head that's tied up to the ceiling or up to the heavens. Pelvic area is tilted forwards, feels like it's hanging down from that suspension from above. And feel yourself sitting down as well. Pelvic area is tilted forwards, where the top of the legs meet the buttocks, you have a groove called the gluteal sulcus. Feel like, feel like you're sitting down onto there, like you're sitting down onto a, onto a high stool and releasing and relaxing into your legs. Like what if you were sitting down, so you're not locking the legs out. You're, the muscles in the legs are tensing just as much as they need to in response to uh, gravity, the weight of the body and the ground underneath your feet. Opening all the joints, so you're not uh, letting all the weight of the body settle into any, any individual joints. You're dropping the weight down through all the joints into the ground. Okay, so we've worked on those two triangles that make up the feet. Uh, the triangle from the ankle to the heel to the balls of the feet from the ankle to the balls of the feet to the toes. Those two triangles. Uh, it's just as we're standing here like this, you want about 70% of the weight towards the triangles at the rear of the feet, 30% of the weight to the triangles at the front of the feet, softening the insteps, the bone tissue above the arch of the feet. Imagine that these are as soft as cotton wool. Okay, just bring your, keep your jaw parallel to the floor. Keep your nose in line with the belly button. You have that pullback feeling with the ears, that lifting and floating feeling with the head. Keeping that, I want you to bring your arms up until you can just see the hands out the corner of each eye. And you want to make sure that you can always see the hands out the corner of each eye with the nose in line with the belly button and the jaw parallel to floor. You can always see your hands out of your peripheral vision. Arms are like stand by your side, so not too high, but not too low either. And just see them out the corner of each eye. And have the feeling here if a drop of water were to land on your naked shoulder, shoulder it would dribble all the way down. It wouldn't trickle off any angles of the elbow, it would dribble all the way down and trickle off your fingers. You have pretty much a straight line between the middle fingers and your elbows. And when we say straight in Tai Chi, you always look for a slight curve in the string, paradoxically. Okay, so your arms are balanced like two sides of an equally balanced scale here. Sitting down, touch the tongue onto the upper palate, just behind the front teeth, the lips and teeth are together. Uh, sink the chest, round the upper back, not hunching the upper back, but not sticking the chest out either. Uh, sink the lower ribs to fill the lower back so you're not curving in the lower back. And really feel like, when we're going through this, really feel like the movements are coming from an area that's about three fingers below the belly button and in the center of your body. Arms down by side. I just want you to drop. I'm going to drop onto my left leg to start off with. You can mirror me here and do the right. Drop the weight onto the left leg and then turn to your left. Okay, still facing towards the left. I want you to sit back from the left leg to the right leg or to the other leg. And then I want you to turn to that side. Still facing towards the side there. Push back. Sit down and select. So get the majority of the weight on this leg and then turn to the side. We have the bear exercise the bear exercise. Make sure you're not leading with the hips, you're not leading with the shoulders, pushing the whole body back and the turn. Try and keep the, the, par the hips parallel to the floor and parallel to the shoulders. As I said earlier, keep the nose in line with the belly button, shoulders in line with the hips, hips and shoulders parallel to each other and parallel to the floor. So the nose in line with the belly button, making sure you can see the hands out the corner of each eye at all times, will make sure that you're not turning from your upper back. The same Tai Chi, all the movements come from the waist. They say when the waist moves, everything moves. If the waist stops, everything stops. Make sure once the waist has stopped turning here, you don't continue to turn from your upper back. You shouldn't do if you keep your nose in line with the belly button and making sure you can see your hands at the corner of each eye. Turning, sitting back. 
So you can bring the breath into it, into this if you've not already. So breathing in, sit back, turning, sinking, breathing out. Breathing in, sitting back, turning, sinking, breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Nice deep abdominal breath. Really feel like you're breathing into that area that's about three fingers below the belly button and in the center of the body. Imagine you have a ball there and you're breathing into that ball and you just feel it expanding and contracting with the breath. Breathing in and breathing out. So keeping nice and upright. You can imagine your, uh, you feel as if you're suspended from above. You can imagine you're balancing a bowl of water on the top of the head as well and you don't want to spill this bowl of water down your face. You can imagine that the pelvic area is like a bowl of water, full to the very brim. You don't want to tip any of this water out. Breathing in and breathing out. And I said you are sinking now, so you're not locking the legs out and doing it like this. You are sinking down into the legs, but you're not bobbing up and down. You're always quite sunk. So you have a slight rise and fall inside the body, but you're not really bobbing up and down. You're pretty much staying on the same level. Which if you're holding a lot of tension in this area here, which is one of the areas where we do hold on to a lot of tension, if you hold on to a lot of tension in this area, you tend to have to go up and over that tension or under that tension. You want to move freely through this area. Which again, if you are just moving from this area, if you are just tensing all the muscles around here to get this movement, you tend to be bobbing up and down. You want to be moving freely through this area, like a boat floats through water, so slightly submerged, but floating across the surface freely. Floating across the surface freely. So engaging all the muscles around here, but not, not just moving from there. Really feel the movements coming from that area that's about three fingers below the belly button and in the center of the body. Imagine that ball there, a fist sized ball closer to the spine than to the front of the body. And really feel the movements coming from there. Feel yourself neutralizing the weight of the body down through that ball and feel the strength of the legs coming up through that ball to move the upper body. Breathing in. And breathe out, really relax your shoulders, heavy shoulders. And so this is called the, the constant bear, or sometimes called the bear exercise with eyes staring like an owl. You know, bears, they tend to, when they walk on their, on their hind legs, they tend to lumber like this, and we don't want to do that. We don't want to throw, throw away this zong thing, this central equilibrium, this head as if suspended from above, this raising of the spirit of vitality to the top of the head. So the constant bear, so a constant movement here. No stopping. This constant movement, this opening and closing of the inguinal crease, the hip area, and this inguinal crease folding in with the movement of the body. So again, you're not tensing from here to get that folding in. It's opening and closing. Make sure one of the mistakes I see people often doing this is kind of doing it like a figure of eight in this area here. You're just moving straight across and then turning. It's not a figure of eight. The pelvic area hanging down plumb the whole time. So you feel yourself moving between those two triangles, or the base of those two triangles that make up the feet. So you're activating that pump of the connective tissue that runs along the, the soles of the feet. Uh, one of the things I have to really work on in this one is make sure that my, my lower ribs don't flare out and my lower back curve in. Because when that happens, you put a lot of pressure onto the rectus spinal muscles in the lower back, which you shouldn't do. And it limits the, the movement you get from your waist as well when you put too much, too much, mus uh, too much uh, pressure onto the erector spinal muscles in the lower back. When you put all the pressure onto those muscles, they're, they're kind of, they tense up to hold, to support you. And it uh, limits your movement. Breathing in. Another common mistake I see with this one is leading with the eyes. Leading with the eyes. Leading with the eyes. You're leading with that ball in the belly. Sitting back, breathing in. Turning, sinking, breathing out. Nice. Relax, moving constant very It is uh, demanding on the legs, this one. Uh, we know Tai Chi is uh, from traditional Chinese medicine. Traditional uh, uh, traditional Chinese medicine are often called the five elemental medicine. The five elements being fire, water, wood, earth, and metal. If you were to associate this, this exercise with one of the elements, you'd associate it with the earth element. Really good for grounding, strengthening your connection with the ground. Really good for di the digestive system as well. Really good for the stomach, uh, large and small intestines. Yeah, giving the kidneys a uh, massage in the lower back as well. You work in the whole body. The same Tai Chi. The same Tai Chi, the whole body should move together. They say in Tai Chi when one part moves, every part moves. If one part stops, every part stops. Uh, they often say that Tai Chi, you should, the whole body moves like a, a rolling ball. So think about a ball when it rolls. When one part of the ball moves, every part of the ball moves. If one part of the ball stops, every part of the ball stops. No part of the ball moves independently of the rest of the ball. That's what you want with your Tai Chi. Every part moving together a rolling ball or, or a turning wheel. So when the, like a turning wheel, when the center of the wheel moves, the rest of the wheel moves with it. 
imagine that ball in your belly is like the center of your wheel. The rest of the body are kind of like the spokes around the wheel, the, the tire around you. Sitting back, breathing in, turning, sinking, breathing out. Really being mindful. We know Tai Chi is a moving meditation. So make sure you are truly engaged in what you're doing here. You're not letting your mind wander away from what you're doing here. You're truly engaged in what you're doing, mind, body, in this moment. So if you do notice uh, thoughts away from what you're doing here coming into your head, don't follow those thoughts. They'll still be there for you to think about after you finish this. So really make sure you are truly engaged in what you're doing. Really make it a, a moving meditative practice. Head as if suspended from the tongue and the roof of the mouth. Sink the chest, round the upper back. Sink the ribs to fill the lower back. Pelvic area is tilted forwards, hanging down. Breathing in. And breathing in. Let's add a little bit more detail. So as you sit back here, I just want you to turn the hands over so the palms are facing more towards the ground than towards uh, than up. Then as you turn to the other side, turn the hands back over so the palms are facing more up. Breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in, turn the hands over so the palms are facing more down than up. Breathing up, turning, turn so the hands are facing more up than down. Breathing in, and breathing out. Just break that one. Breathing in, and breathing out. Breathing in, and breathing out. In, in, and out. Really nice. Nice exercise, very calming, strengthening, relaxing, meditative. Yeah. And breathe out. Using the minimal amount of effort here to keep your body in motion. You could really feel like you're just pouring one side of the body into the other side of the body. Like you're pouring like a jug of water from one from one leg to the other leg. Just this gradual filling and emptying of the legs. Uh, I don't know how true it is. I've not, never really had a like arthritic pain or a real severe or I had joint problems, or injuries. But one thing I did read about exercise like this, you can imagine if you do have joint problems, you can imagine you're pouring like a warm, fine sand from leg to leg, like the sands for an hourglass. And you gradually feel, feel that, that filling and empty. Gradual filling and emptying. So this transfer takes place across the pelvic area, uh, the pelvic floor, the perineum. So really feel yourself moving freely through this area, pouring through this area. So make sure you're not excessively tensing around the pelvic floor or the perineum in the middle there. Breathing in. And breathing out. Moving from your, your center, really engaging your core, your deep frontal line. Breathing in. And breathing out. Balancing a bowl of water on the top of the head, pelvic area balanced like a bowl of water. And breathing in. So you kind of pour across, and then you kind of, you're really working with gravity. You push across or release the, your, the weight of your body is compressing your legs against the ground. Compressing them like springs against the ground, which if you're excessively tense, you won't be able to feel that. It's the, the spring and the elasticity of the, the connective tissue, the myofascia, the stringy, stretchy white stuff that surrounds and connects all the muscles. You want to feel the elasticity of that against these bows you're making with your with your bones, uh, where the, the joints are making these bows. Feel the connective tissues like strings to those bows. And feel the weight of the body loading up those bows. As you breathe in, just allow that energy, that compression to release from the bones and use that to move you over to the other side. And then breathing out, just let gravity bring you down and load those bows up so you're not forcing down, just letting gravity, the weight of the body, the ground and your intent, your mind, steer the weight of the body down to load up all those bones. So you kind of have a lifetime of study here, kind of refining these, this neutralizing, this sinking down, this compression. And then releasing. Just let it release, breathing in. And breathing out, breathing in, and breathing out. Okay, so the bare exercise. And the bare exercise can go into cloud hands as well, but that's not what we're doing in this film. Okay, so we can finish this. So just come up to shoulder width stance, rub your hands, rub your kidney area, rub the belly, rub 
the inguinal crease, the buttocks, the thighs, the knees, rubbing warm, loving, positive energy into your knees. Shins and calves, ankles, if you can get down there. And anywhere you kind of need a bit of a self massage. Okay, so we can finish there. So that the constant bear for this film. Uh, I think it was a short film. I've not been timing it, but I think it's a short film. So uh, give it a practice. Uh, you wouldn't be watching. You wouldn't be here if you hadn't watched it and practiced it. So I hope you enjoyed. And I'm just starting to waffle here. So get yourself a drink of water, and I will see you in the in the next film. So bye for.